Hello friends, I welcome you again to the third video in the series of Introduction to Machine Learning topic. Let us first take the re recap of the last video. In the last video, we have seen what is the train data set and the testing data set and how the machine learning model is built using the train data set in the training phase and it is being evaluated using test data set in the testing phase. In this video, we are going to talk about the positive and negative class, the ingredients of machine learning model, what are the machine learning tasks, the broad categories of machine learning tasks, how the predictive model and the descriptive models are used to accomplish the machine learning task. So let us start with the positive and the negative class. Let us uh, assume that we have been given a problem of classification of a given person, whether it is male or female, given the weight of the person and the height of the person. So as a part of machine learning processing, first we represent the sample data or the input instance space across the two dimensional Cartesian coordinate system where the x axis represents the weight of the person and y axis represents height of the person. The black solid line which is shown in this figure, it represents the decision boundary that actually performs the classification of given input instances. So you can easily observe here that these red circles are basically belong to the male class and the blue circles are belong to the female class. And how this classification is achieved? So this decision boundary will perform the classification of instances such that any instance that lies above this decision boundary will be classified to the main class and any instance that lies below this decision boundary will be classified to female class. So essentially this positive and negative class are basically uh, you can say that the they are used in the binary class classification problem. So what is the binary classification problem? When the classification are performed for only two classes, for only two labels, or for only two target variables, then such problems are referred as the binary classification problems. So here you can say that the male class is belong to positive class and female class is belong to negative class. You can take other example that is uh, detecting whether the given email, incoming email is spam or not spam. So spam is maybe a positive class and non-spam may be a negative class. So that's all about the positive and negative class. So let us move to the next slide that is the ingredients of machine learning. So what are the ingredients of machine learning? So the features used to build the machine learning model, the training data set which is used along with the machine learning algorithm to construct a machine learning model, the data points, the output that is uh, produced by the constructed machine learning model and the task that is achieved using the constructed machine learning model, all these are basically the ingredients of machine learning. So Peter Flatch has rightly said that right features are used to build the right model that achieve the right task. So let us understand these ingredients one by one. So what is feature? So feature defines a language in which the relevant objects are defined in particular domain. For example, the car object can have features like model number, manufacturing year, kilometers, etc. The next ingredient that is task, it is an abstract representation of a problem that we want to solve regarding the using uh, regarding those domain objects. For example, a task could be to decide the price of the used car, to decide the average of the car, and so on. So many of the tasks can be represented as a mapping from data points to output. This mapping is generally done by the machine learning model. So there are wide variety of models to choose from. So you can have geometrical model, you can have probabilistic model, algebraic model, logical model, discriminative model, and what not. So it is observed that the model lends the machine learning field diversity, but the task and the features gives it unity. What it means? 
doesn't matter whether you are using probabilistic machine learning model, geometrical machine learning model, or logical machine learning model, but the tasks and features are always used in spite of the type of machine learning model you are using. So that makes the machine learning model unique, though the machine learning field is diverse because we are using different types of machine learning model. So let us move to the next uh, slide, that is the task, machine learning task. So the problem that can be solved with the machine learning is generally defined as task. And tasks have the two broad categories, supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So the task of grouping the data with the prior information is known as supervised learning. And remember, supervised learning always uses the trained data set. There is a control environment. Uh, we perform the classification with some prior information that we have the trained data set. We know the labels of the sample data. So that's what about the supervised learning in brief. The other broad category of machine learning task is the unsupervised learning. In unsupervised learning, our objective is to find out the hidden structure from the given data where the environment of classification is not under control. We do not have the liberty to use the trained data set. We do not have, we do not have the liberty to uh, use the test data set. So our objective or our aim is to find out the patterns from the sample data. And that's what the unsupervised learning task is all about. So two types of modeling are used to accomplish the supervised learning task and unsupervised learning task. Namely, they are predictive model and descriptive model. So first, try to understand the predictive model. The output of the predictive model, model involves the target variable. That is, the target variable is known in case of predictive model. The model tries to predict the value of x using other values in the data set. For example, it tries to predict if loan is approved or not, or maybe an email is spam or not. So this is what about the predictive model. So in nutshell, we can say that the predictive model involves the target. Now on the counterpart, the output of the descriptive model does not involve target variable. A descriptive model instead tries to find out this hidden structure in the data uh, by finding out some patterns which are, uh, you know, which is of interest. So it finds the structure of data in a novel and an interesting way. More specifically, it detects or recognizes a particular pattern. So let us move to the next slide. That is the categories of the machine learning task. So we have already seen there are two types of categories for the machine learning task. It is supervised learning and unsupervised learning. So the supervised learning task uses the predictive model, uh, which are nothing but the classification and regression task, which uses the predictive model. Whereas the subgroup discovery and the descriptive clustering supervised learning task, it uses the descriptive model. In case of unsupervised learning, the predictive clustering, it uses the predictive model, whereas association rule mining, Sometimes it is also referred as market basket analysis. It uses the descriptive model. Okay, so let us now understand the predictive task. So these are some predictive tasks which is used by the predictive modeling or which, which predictive model is used to perform the, uh, or to achieve the goal. In the first predictive task is the binary classification. So binary classification is the task of classifying the given instances into two groups on the basis of classification rule. So it is basically easy to explain and it is very intuitive. For example, decide the category of email as spam or ham, decide whether the given person is male or female, decide whether the student uh, are pass or fail. So these are some examples of binary classification. The next predictive task is the multi-class classification. In multi-class classification, the task is of classifying the instances into more than two groups. For example, decide the category of email, spam, or it is a private mail, or it is a work-related mail. So here you can see that there are more than 
two classes for the classification. The another example can be a classification of fruit. So the first class could be apple, it could be orange, it could be mango, or it could be banana. So the third predictive task is the regression. Now remember, in first two predictive tasks, that is binary class classification and multi-class classification, the target variable or the output has discrete value. In case of binary classification, there are two uh, output values, that is yes or no, zero and one. In case of second predictive task, that is multi-class classification, we can have more than two discrete values. So it may be class one, class two, class three, class four, and so on. But in the third type of predictive task, that is regression, sometimes it is natural to discard the notion of discrete classes. So instead, predict a real number, that is, for example, randomly selecting a, an email from the inbox and label it with an urgency score between zero to one such as work-related email are labeled with the priority 1.1 and so on. The last type of predictive task uh, is clustering. In this task, we are grouping the data without the prior information and that's why it is known as clustering. A clustering is a typical work by measuring the similarities between the given instances. So that means ultimately we are putting similar instances in the same cluster and the dissimilar instances into a different cluster. In one way of clustering, every cluster has one representative which is known as exemplar. And this clustering is known as predictive clustering. I'll repeat, in predictive clustering, every cluster has one representative which is known as exemplar. So the, if the cluster contains the exemplar or the representative, then such clustering is known as predictive clustering. Okay, now we'll talk about the descriptive task. So the first descriptive task is the subgroup discovery. So subgroup discovery, it attempts to search the relation between the different properties or the variables of a set with respect to the target variable. So in general, the, in subgroup discovery, the relations are represented through the rules. For example, if the line of compilations are greater than 100 and the complexity of the program is greater than 4, then we declare that code as defective or else the code is not defective. So we are using some rule for the classification purpose. The next type of descriptive task are association rule discovery. For, a, for example of market basket analysis, considering the association rule of two item sets, which are in the form of X and Y, that is X subject to Y, or X tends to Y. For example, if bread, then milk. If ink, then pen. So what it means, so there is a, we are trying to find out the association between the items. For example, uh, if customer purchase bread, then he or she also purchase the milk. So we are trying to find out the association between the item bread and the milk. The last type of bread, uh, descriptive task is the descriptive clustering. We have already talked about what is clustering. Now, what is the difference between predictive clustering and the descriptive clustering? In descriptive clustering, the exemplars are not used. The cluster will never have the exemplars. The cluster will not have representative. And that is the major difference between the descriptive clustering and the predictive clustering. Otherwise, apart from this difference, the concept of clustering remains same. And we have already explained it as in clustering, our objective is to find out the patterns from the sample data. We are trying to find out the hidden structure, the hidden uh, patterns from the sample data. And the entire environment of classification is not under control because we are not using any trained data set. We are not using the label data set. So that's it from this third video that is positive and negative class, ingredients of machine learning, 
we have talked about the machine learning tasks, supervised and unsupervised machine learning. Then we have seen the two broad categories of the machine learning tasks with respect to predictive modeling and the descriptive modeling. And then we have seen how the predictive tasks are uh, accomplished using predictive modeling and the different descriptive tasks are accomplished like subgroup discovery, association rule and descriptive clustering using descriptive modeling. So that's all from this video. I hope you also enjoy this video. So these are the references for this presentation. You can follow these references. Thank you very much for patiently watching this video. If you have again any doubt or query, please write me to this email ID or you may also reach out to me at this contact number. Thank you once again for watching this video. See you in the next video.